Lynn, AIFD, CFD, GMF, and I'm the Education Coordinator here at Floriology Institute. And I thought I would just show you what we would be working on in class in a couple of weeks. And we are going to make a lily grass rose in our focus group. So this is what that's going to turn out like. We're going to weave this together and turn it into a rose. So we're going to line up the tips of our lily grass. So hopefully they're going to end at about the same place. And then we're going to band together our stems. Now actually, the softer the lily grass is, or slightly dehydrated, the better this will be. And we're just going to cut that off. So we have that bound together and we have these lined up. So we are going to start by spreading these out some. And when I first learned, I did it on five pieces of grass because that was easy for me to hold and work with. And I'll show you why as we go along. It doesn't matter if you weave this way to this way or this way to this way, as long as you always do it the same. And if you weave over under or under over, as long as it's always done in the same pattern, your rose will come out really good. Now I'm taking a moment, this is nice fresh lily grass, and I'm just kind of breaking up those fibers in that end down there. So hopefully they won't break on us in the middle of our weave. So now that they're very pliable, I'm gonna spread them back out. And I'm going to start by flipping this one over, bringing the bottom side up. So we're going over, under, over, under, over, and under. And we're gonna pull this tight, but not too tight because these are a little bit fresh. Now we're going to start the same way. We went over this one, so with this one on the end, we're going to go over, under, over, under, and keep our pattern going. And one of the things that you can check, if this one is under this blade, then you know that's going to be over, so that one's right, so this one's over, this one's under. And you can follow along and make sure that you are weaving correctly. Now, once you get far enough along, these blades won't shift around on you real easy, and they'll be held in place, and it'll be a lot easier for you. So now that we have six of our blades going one way and one going out, we're going to do a quarter turn. Now we have six going up and the one going out. And we're going to continue our weave, same pattern, over, under, over, under, over, under, pulling it back tight. And we are going to continue this pattern for as long as we can going out the tips of the grass. Now the thing that we can't control is the width of the blades. So some of the blades of grass will run out before the others, and whenever we go as far as we can, that's where we'll end our rosette. And turning it. When I first saw this, one of my friends had made a hat, and it was absolutely the most gorgeous, unique thing I had ever seen. And she had clustered several of these together. Her largest piece was 21 blades of grass. Now that's a lot, and I don't know how she held it. And then she dropped down to 15 blades and then dropped down again and made several different sizes and then grouped them together to form her. Actually, it was a fascinator. It's absolutely spectacular. And she gave me directions over the telephone. So I know if I can just listen to the directions, you can watch the video and follow along and stop and restart and learn to make this rose. Now this rose could be used as a focal area or focal point in your arrangement. You can cluster several of them together to form a focal area. They can be worn as a boutonniere or cluster several small ones together to make a corsage 
There's all kinds of applications that you could do for it, or group them together to make a fascinator. Be as creative as you want to be. Now you can see this one is a lot shorter now than the others, so we won't be able to go too much farther. All right. Once we've gone as far as we can, we have a center right here. And you can see how it's spread out and starting to take shape, although it looks more like a square right now. But we have to go just this last time, maybe. Mm, awfully short. We'll see if we can hold him together. We are going to take all of these, gather them together, and go down through the center of this, just like that. Now, still looks like a square, but we're gonna take our initial piece and we're gonna twirl it around and start to shape it into the rose. Now we're gonna Take our stem tape, this could be bind wire, this could be bullion, it could be whatever you have to secure the two pieces together so it doesn't spin out on you. Now it depends on what you're going to do with it. You could cut all of this away and use this as your strong stem to insert into the um, floral foam or down into an arrangement. This is three pieces of the lily grass together and I have taped it and then I have taken the vine wire and covered that up to give it a more uh, professional finish and that's probably the size that I would wear for a ring bearer. That would be more appropriate to his, his size. This is five pieces of the lily grass. I haven't finished this off. I taped it together but I wanted to show you, I could take one of the longer pieces of grass that was left over, and we can always come around, add a little piece of U-glue here, and use actually the piece of lily grass to be our final mechanic. This can be cut away if it's going to be worn as a boutonniere, or this could be cut away to put down into the arrangement. So however you finish this off, you do need to cover that up, especially if you're going for certification or in a competition. So I hope these help, and I hope you follow us online, in person, or on demand.